<laughs> you know what, though? You know what I feel like we've had way too much of tonight? We've had too many dudes. Too many guys up here. I think it's time we get a lady's perspective on comedy. Yes. And I can think of no one better than this lady. I actually met her through a friend on Twitter a couple of years ago, and following her feed, I was like, man, she's funny. So then when she showed up for auditions, I was like, oh, you're the funny one from Twitter. And now she's gonna bring her social media right here on stage. <laughs> she is a CPA and the accounting manager for the city of Dunwoody through a public-private partnership. She manages accounting function for the city and her team is also responsible for providing administrative support to the city manager and city clerk. She's also very involved in her church at the local district conference and state levels. That's a whole lot of levels. And as you'll soon discover, she's managed to find an abundance of humor in her life at work and her life at church. Please give some love to Amy King. Hello, friends. So I've been in accounting for 10 years. I started in public accounting and then went private and then I'm now working for the man. How did I get here, you ask? Well, when I was planning my college career, I did a Google search for college degrees for nerdy kids to make money. And I landed on, you guessed it, engineering. <laughs> Until that courts catalog came, I flipped through math, 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 math. I said, self, there is no way an H-E double hockey sticks. So we can do a job that is math all day long. I called up that school and changed my degree to accounting. <laughs> in my adult 16-year-old brain, there was no math in a profession with the word count right in the middle of it. <laughs> Thankfully, I had the knack for getting disproportionately excited about debits and credits equaling one another. I'll never forget that first day in public account in principles of accounting and my balance sheet balanced. The skies opened up, angels sang the hallelujah chorus, the Lord spoke and said it is good. <laughs> my accounting career had been ordained. So I jumped right into public accounting right out of graduate school. And public accounting, I found it prepares you for one of two things. One, it prepares you to be a partner in a public accounting firm, which according to the college professors is the be all and end all of accounting. Basically, it's the Nobel Prize in accounting and they gush all over you. Oh, look, Sally's a partner. They put you in the alumni magazine. And the other thing it prepares you for is to do anything, no matter how awful, as long as it's not public accounting. <laughs> You take that first job out of public accounting, you walk into your basement office with no windows, asbestos tiles, signs of recent flooding, and that computer that will still operate the original Oregon Trail game. And you're like, you know what? No, this is good. This, this will do. You know, so who cares if you're never gonna get a raise again? You already love ramen noodles. Who cares if there's roaches running all through your office? You can just, you can tuck your socks into your pants. You'll be fine. <laughs> there is just no limit to what you can handle when you go home before the sun goes down. <laughs> if you're wondering about this accent, which I'm sure you are, from Alabama, a really small town. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, it's one of those really small towns where everyone knows everyone else, but no one will look at each other in the liquor store. <laughs> it's like a cross between Little House on the Prairie and that town in Footloose. So you could, <laughs> you could go to a dance, but you had to have on one of those long gingham dresses and a bonnet, both of which coincidentally I still own. And we only had three channels growing up. One of them was PBS, so maybe we don't count that one. And you could only get two at a time, and you had to turn the antenna to get both of those channels. 
And if you're not familiar with turning the antenna, that's where one person goes up on the roof <laughs> and the other person stands in the house and hollers if the channel is clear. <laughs> They're like, no, no, you turned it too far. You have to go back a little bit, which is fine on like a normal day, but on a windy day, someone has to stay up on that roof and hold the antenna. And you get in like this modified warrior pose so that you're not blowing like a pale flag of defeat in your flannel nightgown while your parents watch the news. So, you know, we, small town, there were not a lot of stores, so we had to go to the neighboring town to go shopping for clothes or groceries or to the sporting goods store. You all know the sporting goods store. I think Richard's sporting goods was too big to fit on the sign, so they just used his nickname. We're going to just call it the sporting goods store. There's, there's no use scandalizing anyone, and my mama is here. So my sister and I went to the sporting goods store one Sunday after church, because with a name like that, they're certainly not closed on Sunday. <laughs> so we were looking around separately and I saw a hammock and it was on sale and I'd been wanting a hammock and I looked at it. Well, I thought, well, I'll try it out. It was all set up and... <sighs> I laid down in that hammock and the next thing you knew, I was flipping. And not over like it poured me into the floor, no. A-double-S over tea kettle, my feet were in the air. And I didn't think to protect my dress. I, my hands went back from my head and my dress went over my head and hollering, nobody look at me. Does, <laughs> does, does not get people to not look at you. So, so I got up off the floor and I found my sister and I told her the story and she just said, God, I hope you had on underwear. <laughs> well, of course I did. I'd been to church. I had, on a, I had on a petticoat too, for goodness sakes. So my husband, he's basically where I'm from, just a little over the Georgia line, far enough away that we're not cousins. <laughs> Cl close enough so he can still understand me. Our accents, our accents are really similar, but we speak different languages. I speak accounting and he speaks airplanes. And he's really creative where after the Enron scandal, creativity is just downright frowned upon in my profession. <laughs> and when one person speaks math and one person speaks magic, well, even the arguments get really interesting. Well, he'll say, I don't understand why well, you don't understand blah, blah, blah magic. And I'll look at him and say, I don't understand why you can't do a pivot table in Excel. And they, you know, there's lots of differences. He'll go to work and spend tons of money flying people all over the country, and then I feel bad if I don't print a document double-sided. <laughs> His idea of planning for the weekend is saying, hey, do you want to go to New Orleans and eat some oysters? And my idea of planning for the weekend is saying, here's a grocery list, an envelope full of, of coupons. We had on budget. We don't budget. We just get permission for any expense over a hundred dollars. I get permission before. He gets permission after. <laughs> I'm like, oh, an airplane. We needed an airplane. That is exactly what we needed. It has it flown in 60 years, and we have to rebuild the whole thing. That is better. <laughs> oh, we need a hanger for it too. Perfect. Let's do that as well. You just never know what's going to happen when you're married to a, to a pilot at the end of the day, but you know your checkbook's probably going to be out. I'm Amy King. Y'all been a great audience. This is...
Th this is just my third time in front of a crowd. The first two times I was preaching, and like then, I'm gonna assume that none of y'all got saved. <laughs> but after they pass the collection plate, we can have an altar call. <laughs> Good night. Keep it going for Amy King.